Welcome back. It has been a while, but I'm happy to see you again. I hope that you all have been healthy. Um, we've been going through some crazy times here in 2020. Um, it's forced us to stay inside or, or stay in our gardens, and that also has forced us to adapt our photography. So that's kind of where I'm coming from today, is that uh, due to this situation, um, a lot of us have begun to explore different realms of photography, be it portrait photography, uh, videography, or even macro photography. Now the cool thing about macro photography is that you can do it in your garden. Take pictures of some insects or some flowers, a leaf, anything becomes different and has different textures and uh, has a whole different side to it when you're able to magnify it uh, as you would with a macro lens. Now, that said, macro lenses are expensive and not everyone wants to spend money on a macro lens if they don't know if they like macro photography. So I'm going to show you a way that you can take any lens you have and make it into a macro lens for under $50. Now this is a great affordable option to dive into macro photography uh, and to start taking photos of things on their scale. So really getting into the details of things, um, of objects, of insects, of flowers, uh, and you can really open up a different world and a different beauty that comes along with that. So without further ado, I'm going to talk about two things, like I said, the first of which being these extension rings. Um, they can also be called extension tubes. These in particular are from Mike uh, for the Sony Alpha system. And there is a 10 millimeter and a 16 millimeter one. They come as a pair. Now this costs about $20 new, maybe $15 used. I got them for 12, but hey, I think I got lucky. Um, there are no optical elements in these tubes. Basically, they sit in between your lens and the camera itself. Now this allows your lens to have a lower minimal focal distance, which allows your subject to take up a much larger part of your sensor than it otherwise would, thereby increasing magnification. These in particular have electric contacts on them, which allow you to keep the aperture control and the autofocus ability of your lens and camera. So that's pretty cool too. You can also do video when you have these extension tubes on. Now the second option is the Raynox DCR250. Now this snaps on to the front of your lens and acts as a magnification glass. It has eight diopters of magnification um, and it gives you a very, very magnifying image, more so than the extension tubes will. That's due to the optical element. However, given that it has an optical element, it also suffers everything that optical elements do. So, if this glass might not be at the same quality as your lens is, you will see a slight reduction in sharpness. However, to get an intro into macro photography, as is what we're trying to do, um, this will do the trick and give you even more magnification, as I said, than the extension tubes will. Um, and as it snaps on the front of your lens, you will not lose your aperture control or your autofocus either. Now, with both of these options, your depth of field um, will narrow. So you're going to get very, very thin um, layers of focus. So to compensate for that, you will have to crank up your aperture. Now, when you crank up your aperture, you lose light, and therefore you're going to have to compensate by increasing your shutter speed. Now, that of course means you're going to have to shoot on a tripod. So that is another thing that comes with macro photography. But hey, that's the name of the game. So. This costs about 50 bucks, this costs about 20 bucks. Both of them are going to give you um, the ability to make any lens into a macro lens. However, there is a caveat. While the extension tubes do mount natively onto your Sony Alpha system um, and thereby allow you to use it with any lens, the Raynox has a limitation in that it can only snap onto 67 millimeter filters or lower. Now what that means is that if you have a lens such as the 24-105 f4 or the G Master 100-400, um, you're going to have to get a step down ring. Uh, and this is what I did. This costs about two, three dollars and it basically just screws on to the front of your lens and reduces that filter size. Um, the Raynox then just snaps on to the front of it like so. Um, really not a problem there and I don't really think you'll notice um, any difference there with the step down ring. So that's just something to note. 
um, but they both are great options. And I'm going to show you examples of both of them and give you a feel for what you can achieve when using these options to get that macro lens feel. Now I'm going to use the 24 to 105 um, f4 Sony lens and the reason I chose this lens is because it's already such a great all-around lens, so versatile and so many people have it, um, that I thought why not give it a little more versatility and see what it can do as a macro lens. Um, with that said, again you will need the step down ring for this to work with the Raynox. With the extension tubes you, you don't need anything, it goes straight in between the lens and the camera and will work immediately. So. Natively, that lens, the 24-105, has a 0.31 magnification. With the tubes on, it goes up to 1.16. Now, that's already better than a lot of those one-to-one -one macro lenses. So that's incredible. You're going to get right, right from the get-go macro quality or macro magnification photographs and whether you notice a difference in quality well let's see maybe maybe you will maybe you won't but again if you just want to try macro photography or maybe it's something you'll do occasionally um, but it's not going to be your bread and butter you're not going to be making money from this this is a way to go um, the Raynox will bump up that magnification even farther to a 1.41 times magnification now that is pretty incredible for something that costs $50 let's go ahead and get into it I'm gonna take some photographs we'll meet back on my computer we will look at them together uh, and then I will send you on your way. So, stay tuned. Okay guys, so here we have an Acorn. I shot this at 105mm with the 24 to 105 f4. Um, just a normal shot, no extension tubes, no Raynox. So I'm focusing on this imperfection here on the Acorn. So if we dive in there, you can see that some detail is there, but I mean, we're really not seeing sharp edges here or anything like that that, which can be expected. I mean, this is a very, very small thing. But um, if we compare this to the Raynox, um, also shot at f4, we zoom into the same spot. I mean, this is night and day. And it's so apparent that you get more detail using the Raynox. I could stop the comparison here and be happy. Um, but I'm not going to stop the comparison here. There are a few more things to talk about. And look at. So for one, uh, that narrow depth of field. So we actually had to go to f16 to get a similar image, if you will, um, with everything in focus. With the Raynox, um, again, this makes a nice sharp image. I think it's totally usable, especially for just using it to do some intro to macro photography. I mean, look at this, ton more detail. Uh, it really brings out more texture of that acorn. And it looks great. But let's so go ahead and compare this now to the extension tubes. So unfortunately my acorn had moved a little at this time, but still roughly the same spot here we're trying to focus on. Um, now these are both at f4. We can zoom in here and you can see that the ex extension tubes actually hold up really well to the Raynox. Uh, again, the extension tubes have no optical element, um, so they have a little less magnification, but they hold up really well here. You can see maybe that the Raynox has the edge, but one thing is that the Raynox has a different resolution, that's because I have to use APS-C mode when using the Raynox at that focal length. If I don't, I get something like this, some heavy vignette. So that is a disadvantage to the Raynox. Um, if you're using smaller focal lengths, you will get vignette. But let's go ahead and look at another one. So this is on the left, a normal image taken with the lens, focusing on the middle of the flag. And here is the Raynox, and you can see that there is a lot of detail there, whereas a normal photo on the left, I mean, it's really not a competition here, it is completely blurred out. Um, and I'm doing this all manual focus, so I know where I'm focusing, and, but if you say, hey, what about um, the front of the flower? Well, I also took one on the Raynox of the front of the flower, and you can see here again that there's just a ton more detail there, there's a ton more texture uh, and it's yeah it's a much better photo as a bonus um, I took a photo with the 100 to 400 G master so it's also using a step down ring uh, same focal point here and this photo looks extremely sharp across the frame it's at f14 um, if we compare that to the f4 version um, there isn't much of a competition I would say but that's also not so fair so let's compare it to the f16 version um, so on the right is the G Master, on the left is the 24105. And in this case, you can see it's a much 
better competition, but I mean, the G Master still wins here. Um, as can kind of be expected, it's twice as expensive. Uh, you get a bit more sharpness there. Um, and I didn't have the vignetting problem with the 100 to 400 G Master. It must be something to do with the way it focuses, because I also use the step down window. And just to show you how small this is, that's my fingernail. This thing is literally smaller than the head of a pin. All right, guys, so I hope you liked that video. Um, let me know what you think. Did you think that the photos looked better natively with the extension tubes or with the Raynox? Uh, also, let me know if you're going to try it out yourself. So if you're going to buy the extension tubes or the Raynox, uh, let me know which one you chose and, and what your results were, how it, how it worked out for you, uh, and if you like macro photography. I think it's always cool to get a, a different look at something that you might see every day. A blueberry will look a bit different under a 1.16 times magnification than it will with your naked eye. So hey, that's it for today. If you like this video, please subscribe, give me that thumbs up, and stay tuned, stay healthy. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.